So how Paganipa Sani Desa sounds when you articulate it is how you must have a different aesthetic understanding of this. Or Vani Po, some lyrics I'm saying, okay? It's very different from Pagani Pa Sani Re. So what happens is the way you aesthetically associate to Kalpana Swara rendition is very different from Nerval, very different from Alata. But in general, you will find that Kalpana Swara is what is first guided for a musician, for a student. We start with this point. Because you are articulating the Swara. It's probably easier to start with the articulation than, than saying don't articulate but create. It's slightly more abstract, right? So, Kalpana Swara is again done. One, one, one. Yeah. When you are singing Kalpana Swara, you are saying here, you have to come back to the starting mm -hmm. point. Suppose there is a small mishap in your timing. Yeah. Is there anything restricting you from... Mishap in what? <laughs> timing. In your timing. Uh -huh. you don't jump on this. You know, we don't make a frantic jump. You can, can you, you can you extend the hour terms? Of course you can, but you, you think you are stupid. Huh? <laughs> we'll know when you made a frantic jump and you ran for another hour term knowing that you missed it. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Sometimes it, it happens to No you. meaning. No, no, I understand. You have to plan to get back. No, you see what happens actually you don't plan. You, if you plan, then you won't sing Kalpana Swara. Uh -huh. You just keep singing. So how do you strike that balance? Uh -huh. Keep singing. <laughs> At some point, it will kick in. That's why we spent 20, 25 years of our life doing this, and some people have spent 60 years of their life doing it. You keep singing it, you get to a point where you give me any point in any raga, and I know how to link it to the raga. Any point. Are there any set number of hour terms that you do? Usually, what happens is Kalpana Sura always starts minimum to maximum. So, generally, you would sing the first few swarms within one hour term, which is within that. Pagari Sarvi Vata Gapani Pagari Pagari Niriva Gari Niva Gari Niva Gari Niva Riva Gapani Sagari Niva Gari Va Then Pagapani Baga Pani Sari Sani Baga Pani Sari Baba Ni Sari Gari Niva Gari Keep extending Usually small to be and generally, like in Naraval, this is very similar to a certain extent to the Kirkal and Naraval which I told you, if you notice. I, 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 I mean the emphasis is very similar to Kirkal as well. There is a similarity. Okay? From here, we see second speed. And midstream, you can decide to add to our terms if you are inspired. Mm, of course. And I know, I, I just, yeah, of course. The rhythmist will keep uh, pace. <laughs> he has to. <laughs> Meaning there is no... There is no set uh, big pattern where he has to come and come in. A good rhythmist will be aware of every movement that I am doing and come along with me. <coughs> sense that I am extending the pipe and improvise, sense that I am I'm moving on and come. A good rhythmist will be able to sense it. They, it's, it's all part of a, a sensibility that we all have when we, when we sing music. You know, we know. The violinist also knows. You all know. But we can extend it to however long we want. There is no hard and fast food. But in general, you start from small and big. So that's the general. But doesn't mean that I can't sing an only one swaram, a long swaram, and finish Kalpana Swara. I can do that. Nobody is going to say, how can you do that? But in general, we start. But even using the shortest swaram, it's not as you plan the. No. And it just comes spontaneously. But the end comes spontaneously. Yeah, see, the ending point is also, is not, is also spontaneous. Even the end point is not like you're looking for coming to that point to finish. Initially, all students will look for the point because you're scared you're going to fall. <laughs> but then that is also spontaneous because the melodic line is in, inbuilt in your head, right? So you know where to go. You naturally go wherever you are. You know how to come back and move it or connect it back. That's again, that's all got to do with expertise, creativity, and of the artist. If the artist is able to, they can do anything, anything. Then, like Nervous, Nervous, we sing second speed. Again, we start with small and big. The same. You start with small and big. This is the, one of the most thrilling aspects for most people in the concert. What are the, what are the aesthetic characteristics of this culture? I mean, how, what do we look for to appreciate? The aesthetic aspects of Kulkala Kalpana is different from Kulkala Kalpana. First. The slow speed. The aesthetic aspect of the slow speed is what you should really, if it is done very well, first of all, is 
the fact that every swara is sung with all its kamakas. It's sung with a lot of slower movements. Padari sani riga padari ga pani ga pani riza ba ni riza ba ga ni ni ga ga riga pani riga ri ni ga pani padari sati pa. So you have to look for this articulation of the swara. Yet see a kind of a lot of movement that is happening in male character. So it's far more rigid because of speed of what. What you have to look for is that rigidity and that sharp definition that has to be there. You can't say, you can't say that. You have to articulate the swara very precisely. This articulation, this rigidity, and also a word we use, punch. Okay, we use this word, punch. So it's a kind of emphasis. Gavani zani zani ba, gavani zani ba, pagani zani ba, gavani zani ba, gavani zani ba, gavani gavani zani 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 ba, gavani zani ba. This punch will also be more accentuated in the second stanza because of the rigid nature of the of the creative beats. Okay. Is there a reason why Kalpana Swara is normally positioned at the end of the Kriti? No, sometimes no, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Sometimes you sing it even in between and then complete the couplet. That's also done. It need not be at the end. You can sing a, uh, a kirtana. You may suddenly feel like singing Kalpana Sura in the Anupalavi. You can sing it and then complete the composition. There is no rule that you have to complete the full composition then only sing Naraval or Kalpana Sura. Either way. Usually the lines where Naraval is sung, usually Kalpana Sura also is rendered. Another important point, Kalpana Sura need not be rendered only to the first lyric on a line. No, I can sing Gata Pi Gana Patim. I can sing Swaram to Gana Patim. Gana Patim Bhajekam Pagari Sani Gana Patim Bhajekam. So now you change the formation. The position is here. It slightly makes it more complicated. It can get even more complex. Which means I have to be aware of the exact position. Sometimes it can be weird. For example, Chede Buddhi Manura Chede is actually the last point before the cycle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Chede Buddhi Manura This is a complicated situation. This is makes things far more difficult. It's very difficult. And uh, which means you have to be, again, you have to be aware of the melody and you have to be aware of the, the complicated position. So if, you, if I want to put it in numbers, in second speed in Ali Tal, if four per beat is set, how many supervas can you sing? 32. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The point of the syllable was after 31. Yes. Just to show you the complexity of its position. You can have a syllable at 17. You could have a syllable at 13, anywhere. The only thing is that syllable is usually the beginning syllable of a word. Not check they. You don't see Swaran to they would be, they would be. Okay? You don't. That's also an idea. So if these kind of positions, odd positions, make coming to a precise point <coughs> even more interesting. Complicated, interesting. But I think the great musicians are those who make this sound easy also. You don't make this sound like a major complicated place. Even for the person who doesn't realize it's a complicated position, should be should be aesthetic. Right? So you, you have to sing it as casually as you would sing it something on the beat in the beginning. So your expertise and your practice should lead you to a point where any position anywhere is, is just a stroke in the park. Okay? We'll move from ah, one one interesting thing about Kalpana is that in a way it is the musician's creativity linking to the composer's creativity. Every creative, you know, you're creating every every creativity of yours, you're tagging it with a certain creative outpouring of the composer. It does not mean that that limits you in any fashion, but that is in a way what you're doing. You're singing a lot of creative things and then just dovetailing it with what is there. Okay? So, I'll then move to Tanam, which she spoke about. 
just a minute. Yeah. Isn't it? Ramaswamy would consider it synthetic. Yes. Good. It was a creation of Ramaswamy Dikshita, the father of Uttaswamy Dikshita. He created the Raga. It's a synthetic scale. So, um, Thanam is a very, very interesting idea. It's um, along with Naraval, the most, uh, one of the most uh, conceptually complex melodic ideas. See, Thanam, the problem with Thanam is it has rhythmic numbers, but it does not have Thala. Thala. So it has rhythmic numbers in terms of formations. I will show you how. But it is not bound by a rhythmic structure. Right? So it, it's kind of a no man's land kind of a statement. Either you have rhythmic formations in a rhythmic structure, or you don't have. Alapana, for example, does not have either. But Tan has a rigid rhythmic formations that you're creating. But I am telling you, they do not fall into any tar. In fact, they do not fall into any tar. This makes understanding and singing um, extremely difficult. In fact, Tanam, again, the Nerval is, is hardly sung. It's more like a ritual for most people. And most of the time when they sing Tanam, I tell you what they do. I'll sing and show you. Um, I'll, in Tanam, we use the syllables. I'll sing some Tanam and show you first before I even say anything. <laughs>
So I diminish you this melody tree, then I start ascending with this again. So you see all these are patterns. These are definite patterns. Okay? I do not sing it free flowing like an Arabic. Which is not clear cut patterns in this. When you do this partition, you have in your mind the Arabic. Yes, hundred percent true. No, nothing is sacrificed. Now I take on. I have the mind, I have the raga in the mind. So I know what kind instinctively I know how these patterns should fall by our people. So there are certain patterns may not work in certain ragas. I cannot sing those patterns. Certain ragas, in fact, certain ragas singing Tanam itself is a problem. Because those ragas don't allow you for rigid movements. If those, those ragas don't allow you for rigid movements, and you are affecting the aesthetic of the raga by introducing rigid movements, then you should not sing Tanam in those ragas. Um, one example of raga, you know, technically you can sing Tanam in any raga if you are a brilliant musician. But even among that, I will say raga like Nilambari. Sing too much Tanam is a problem. You can sing Tanam. I can sing and show you Tanam. I have sung Raja Tanam Pallavi in Nilambari. But I know as a musician, singing Tanam in Nilambari is much more limiting because of the because the aesthetic of Nilambari is the slowness. This, this continuous flow is what gives the aesthetic element of Nilam. Now, that is not the basis of this form at all. The moment I started making rich, it, it will destroy the aesthetics of Nilam. So I have to be, if I was going to sing Tanam, I'll sing it very carefully. Only in those areas where there's a little window where I could explore. I'll be very careful. But if I was given a raga like what I sang, Bhiri, where it's not an issue at all, no problem. There are certain ragas that are known as Tana ragas. RB. In a small place, in fast mode, and we love it. You see, it's very different. And even though I'm singing a lot of variation, it is still within my conscious that I cannot destroy that sound of the raga. So within this, I can keep singing. But it is still at no cost the same comfort that I will have when I sing a baby. It cannot be. Or a baby. Or any of those. So you can sing Tanam. So Tanam is a, is a very, let's just say, you are looking at all numbers here. I put them as numbers because it's easier to look at them. Okay. So there are all these formations, number formations in, in terms of swaras, but not articulated as swaras, as ananta. Now, meaning of ananta, some people say it's ananta, meaning bliss. But when we actually say it, we say anantunta, we say anantunta, anantunta. Some musicians are very particular, they should only say ananta. You cannot say anything else. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not very sure. What music she said? Anandam, Anandam, Anandam. That seems to be But Anandam is what everybody says. Ananta means bliss. So they say bliss is what you are saying. But anyway. Good point. Good question. It is not. I will not say that. Because this aesthetic form does not exist in the Alapra in this way. Where you are actually building on number structures through a melodic variation. Now this is the same number structure, right? But what will make this number structure end for me is the point of no return melodically that I reach. And if I reach a point of no return melodically here, then I immediately transfer to another melodic structure. Rhythmic number structure. It's called a number structure. Okay? But this kind of derivative kind of singing is never there in another. It's never there. And the rigidity of splitting, for example, 3 and 5, that's why you split. You have to show the 3 and 5. This structure does not exist in Arab. 
That is why it's in between an anathana and in between a kalpana swara. It is somewhere in between the two. So it's neither this or that. That's what makes it very hard to comprehend. So what generally happens with the musicians? They will start with Tara. This is Alapna. But it's a good escape route. I sing it three, four times. So you think I'm singing Tanam. So this, many of us use this technique to escape the problem. But technically, if you sing Tanam, you should not. You could, at the end of a lot of Tanam, dovetail with one small alakana phrase. Just like a flavor. But that cannot be the primary focus of singing Tanam. Then when you have this thing, you can just sing Alapana and go back. So, this is, as it may seem simple, I can tell you any musician who sits and tries to sing it will tell you it is very hard. It is very hard to do. You want to get ideas. You'll be stuck. You want to know. You don't know how to create those forms. You have to comprehend a mathematical form. You have to comprehend that within, most importantly, a melodic form, which is the raga. So, what numbers will work? What numbers will not work? These are instinctively you have to. So it's it's a it's a phenomenal form. There is a habit of playing now within these two things I have to say. Underlying this whole mathematical rather this number game that we are playing the way, the bass beat, if you can keep beat with my tana, you will notice something. You can keep beat with me. Didn't end on beat, right? That's not a necessity. But you noticed it was a bass four that was going. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four is one step. The base of a tana again is always four. It's an overlay of rhythmical patterns on a four, but not bound by the four. Does that make sense? It's on a four. You're always saying, when I say not bound, it does not mean that it has to conclude exactly when a four concludes at some point of time. But if you put a, a, a metronome, it will keep, keep clicking. So there is this unusual abstractness even here in understanding of how the over, how you understand a base layer four. So there is a base layer of four, but you are not bound by the fact that it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so on this you're layering fives, threes, sevens, nines, six, whatever you can. Okay, and the ending point can be anywhere. At that time you ignore. When you end, you don't end, you just ignore the fact. It doesn't matter. So there is also a an underlying four in that which has to be also be understood. So this number of combinations. Uh, I broke that for your understanding. Theoretically infinite. It is not number combinations. It is melodic combinations that reflect as numbers. It is not number. The, no, no, no. The it's game, not the game that you take. It is the raga that defines what are the melodic movements. Based on the raga, these will start getting combining themselves. Again, everything depends on the raga. In some ragas, you may not be able to do a certain combination at all. 3 and 8 may not work, for example. Look, the reason I broke it up like this for you is for you to clearly see that there are numbers there. But I am not thinking of 3 and 5 when I do it. Okay, I am only thinking of the raga and I am thinking of the fact that we are looking at formations over there. They fall into 3, 5, 7 patterns. I can retrospectively look at it and notice it's 5s or 3s. But I am not planning it as five things. So it is not infinite numbers. How did this form evolve? Another big story. If to go for Allah, but higher, we go. Let's not go there. It's, a, it's too long a story. Limited um, in Vina? Um, I'm not very sure that's completely true. Um, it's been used a lot in Vina. But there seems to have, we don't know. Some people have explained there's a form called Thaya which came to Tana. We're not very sure that's true because I've seen Thaya notations from the Sarathi Maha Library. Dated in the 15, 1600s. I've seen notations. Uh, looking at them and discussing with a lot of scholars, we are all quite skeptical about whether you can make a direct link. We don't know because there were two techniques. It is very interesting. I agree. And I must say that the Veena is played a lot in the Veena. 
Now there is a tendency also to play Muradhanam for this in some traditions. I have a serious aesthetic objection to that. Okay? Because the primary form of Dhanam is not to be bound by force or by Tash. The moment Muradhanam artist starts playing Takadim, 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 I can tell you I cannot sing Dhanam. My overlay gets limited. The Tanam singing with the Murdhanam will automatically fall into four patterns. Because I am constantly being emphasized by the guy singing next to me that it's a four. So I will not be able to overlay. And secondly, I have to conclude on a definite four completion. Otherwise, he will seem out of position, both of us. So I have a serious objection to the tradition of Murdhanam being played for Tanam. It may sound beautiful, it may be very nice. That's different. But I think in form and aesthetics, it is counterproductive to what Tanam is and what Tanam is about. Finally, <coughs> I'm sure I've still not touched upon many things and we'll leave that as, as it is. Um, I'd like to touch upon one, two aspects quickly. Um, this whole shlokam of Ritam Singh that we talked about. I don't know whether you spoke about that. No, I was going to come back come to that. Uh, that's just, just putting together all the pieces, that's all. So I was going to come to that at the end. Just to remind you, you speak about Raga identification. I think I, I, I said it last week, I'll say it again. Um, 